Ellen is running through a building, into the elevator, and out onto the street. Suddenly, her father is seen jumping from the building down at the ground in front of her, and she is struck by a passing taxi. Sometime later, she is lying comatose in a hospital bed. A voice asks her not to forget him, and she opens her eyes. Helen's husband, Greg, arrives to visit her. He reveals that she has been in a coma for just over a year. He promises to take her home soon where they can be a family. Helen actually managed to give birth while she was in a coma. Greg returns with their daughter, Heidi, and introduces her to her mother. Helen is visited by Detective Shepard. He is trying to wrap up the case of her father's death. An eyewitness reported seeing her run from the building in distress, and so he asks her about her relationship with her father. She cannot remember, but he asks her to call him if she recalls anything important. As Greg takes Helen from the hospital, he admits that he had to sell their house and they are now broke. They now live in her father's old apartment. Helen is really uncomfortable about living there. While Greg puts the baby to sleep, Helen looks around the apartment, remembering her father. Greg takes her into her father's old study, which he suggests that they make into an art studio for her. Helen seems to be struggling to bond with Heidi, and her frustrations force Greg to intervene. Over time, Helen starts to be able to walk with the aid of crutches, and she starts to sort out her studio. Memories of her childhood start to emerge. She presses a button on the answer phone and hears her father's voice. A message has also been left from a guy named Frank, an old friend of her father's. Helen goes to visit Frank, who explains that he knew her father from the church, but they had drifted apart and he hadn't seen him for years before his death. Helen tells him that her father said something to her on the night of his death and she needs to remember. Frank tells her it's best to put these things to rest. Outside, Helen can see some kids playing and suddenly has a vision of one of them with a terrible zombified face. Her nose starts to bleed and Frank goes to fetch her a tissue. Helen returns home and Greg asks where she has been. They have been joined by Trisha, her health visitor. Helen had forgotten her appointment. Trisha notices that Heidi has some bruises on her leg and Greg tells Helen that she needs to be more careful. As Trisha leaves, Helen confronts her about what she really thinks happened to Heidi. Trisha is confused as to why Helen is so suspicious. Soon after, Greg throws a welcome home party. One of the neighbors, Mr. Mulvaney, comes to speak with Helen. He holds Heidi while Helen goes to find Greg. He is speaking with Father Monroe, who expresses his condolences for her father's death. Helen asks if he knows why her father died that way. The priest says no before moving on. Frank arrives at the party, and Greg demands to know why she has invited him there. Later, Frank walks past the nursery, and Greg asks him, why is he here? Helen overhears the conversation on the baby monitor. Frank tells Greg that his own daughter disappeared when she was younger. The following day, Greg leaves town for a few days for work. Frank pays Helen a visit and they talk about his daughter. Over the next few days, ghostly figures start to appear in Helen's apartment, so she goes to the police station and speaks with Detective Shepard. She asks him his opinion on what happens to us when we die. She thinks that her father may be trying to remind her what he said to her on the night of his death. He thinks that maybe she is speaking to the wrong person. Helen later meets with a psychic investigator named Stu and explains that she has been seeing things. He conducts a seance and starts by trying to contact her father. Helen starts to feel funny and suddenly there is a high-pitched scream through the baby monitor. Helen holds her ears as Stu writes in his notebook. Afterward, he reveals that he wrote six names and asks if they mean anything to her. She says no, but he thinks that they are lost souls who can't get into heaven. He says that they have targeted her and won't just go away. Helen sees a little girl on a bike and screams. Helen goes online to search for the six names. She discovers that these were the names of six kids that went missing from a town called Stoneworth. Helen goes to visit the family of one of the missing kids. One of the parents shows her pictures that his son drew, one of which is a drawing of someone that the kids called Sackhead. She then visits the mother of another missing girl. The day before she went missing, she claimed to have been followed home by a man with no face. She was scared, so her mother made her ride her bike the next day. The mother tells Helen that she'll never forget the look on the detective's face when she told her as she clearly believed her. Helen then goes to visit the retired detective, Gillian Burroughs. 
Helen asks her about the disappearance of these kids and inquires if she ever came across the name Sackhead. Gillian says that she once received a phone call from someone that never spoke, but she is convinced that it was the person that the kids called Sackhead the murderer. Helen arrives home, and Mr. Mulvaney asks if she plans to have any more kids, as he remembers how lonely she seemed as a girl. He tells her that he remembers her moving there when she was four, even though Helen understood that she had been born in that building. Mr. Mulvaney reveals that they moved there from the town of Stoneworth. Helen checks her father's papers and discovers that this is true. She calls Frank and asks how well he knew her father. She discovers that his daughter's name was also on Stu's list. Detective Shepard is on his way to the apartment. Heidi starts to scream, and as Helen searches for her, she is confronted by the spirits. Helen yells, and Shepard breaks in, but all he finds is Helen crying and Heidi on her own. At the station, Shepard tells her that he has been keeping an eye on her. He tells her that she needs to talk to him or he will have to call Child Protection Services. She tries to tell him what he wants to hear, but that makes him angry. Nevertheless, Helen is allowed to leave with Heidi. Outside, Greg is waiting for her. He tells her that he shouldn't have left her alone with Heidi, but after an argument, Greg tells her that he is leaving her and taking their daughter with him. As Greg collects his belongings, Helen starts to experience visions of children, one whom places a box in her bedroom doorway. She opens the box and finds a handwritten letter containing the address of her childhood home. She goes to investigate, and as ghostly child figures appear, she starts to dig in the garden. Eventually, Helen uncovers a skull. The police arrive, and Shepard sits and talks with Helen. She questions how she didn't know what her father did and asks how many there were. She believes that her father will go unpunished, but Shepard tells her that that is unless she believes in hell. Helen goes to see Father Monroe for some spiritual guidance. He assures her that the Bible confirms that she will not be punished for the sins of her father. She quotes scripture to him and he asks her why she gave up coming to church. She asks why God allows so much pain and evil in the world. He believes that man was given free will and that free will allows him to inflict suffering. Helen asks if she is paying for her own sins or those of her father. Father Monroe suddenly reveals that he knew about her father's sins as he confessed to him. Helen leaves in disgust. Gillian hears about the discovered bodies and asks for Helen's address as well as to be kept updated on any further developments. Helen calls Stu and tells him that she needs to contact her father. He advises her and she makes contact with him. She tells him that she will never forgive him and then experiences the moment of his death. She finds a broken picture of her and her father on the floor and as she opens the frame, she finds that the photograph within has been folded and Frank is also in the picture. Greg arrives with Heidi to visit Helen, but he is killed in the garage by an unknown figure. Helen comes to the garage and gets into her car to leave just as Gillian arrives. She finds Greg's body on the ground. His voicemail is ringing and Gillian answers. Helen has left him a message telling him to take Heidi to his mother's and to meet her at Frank's house. Gillian finds that Heidi has been abducted. Helen arrives at Frank's house to find the door resting ajar. She walks in and finds him. He welcomes her home and reveals that she is, in fact, his daughter, Anna. Helen remembers the night of her father's death. He told her that he wasn't her father. Her father was a murderer, but he kept silent and abducted her from Frank, who was his brother, in order to keep her safe. Frank apologizes for being a bad father. There is a noise from the other room. Shepard receives news that a little girl has been abducted. They received two calls, the first from the man that abducted her. He gave his address. Helen finds a little girl chained up in Frank's house. As she looks around, she finds that Frank has a sack over his head. Frank asks her about Heidi, and she demands to know where her daughter is. He tells her that she is asking the wrong questions and headbutts her. He questions if she can take a life to save a life. As Helen screams, there is a gunshot, and Gillian appears having shot Frank. Gillian is taken away by the police. The detectives are still digging up the bodies in the garden, but they still haven't found Heidi. Helen is taken home, and she walks sadly around the apartment. Meanwhile, Shepard receives a call to say that they have found Heidi alive. 
However, before they can tell Helen, she makes a stupid decision as her father did in the past. We see her for the last time from the roof of her apartment building. What do you think about this movie? It was such a sad ending. Let us know in the comments below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.